Greetings, everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jay, aka My Labs, coming to you with a new video. Basically, this one I'm just going to talk about time lapse because I get a lot of questions uh, regarding time lapse. So I thought I would just uh, sit down and talk it out. And we're here at my tech closet, um, also my tie closet. I got to get rid of that one. So I get a lot of questions, um, and I wish I could answer them all, but I'm going to try and do it here in this video. Everything you wanted to know about time lapse, but were afraid to ask. We'll see how much I can get through here. Uh, I had some nice dinner and a couple of glasses of wine. So, hey, it might be a little crazy. I also want to say hey thanks to all the subscribers, wow, 500, um, it's neat to see, I've been super busy lately with my uh, job and everything, my real job, so that's why I haven't been maybe getting back to you if you've uh, asked me a question lately. So let's get down to it, time lapse, I get a lot of questions. So there's a lot of different ways to approach time lapse, there's basically three major ways I can think of and they sort of go from cheap to more expensive um, there's advantages to some and disadvantages to others let's start with cheap a webcam that's probably your cheapest solution right there what are the good and bad things about a webcam probably the worst one is that you have to be tethered or connected to a computer to make it work Another disadvantage is the quality you're going to get out of that solution. Webcams are not the most high quality sensor, cheap optics, and cheap. But that's also the good thing about it. It's very inexpensive if you have a computer system. Most webcams have some sort of capture at a certain interval and save to the hard drive. The second most inexpensive way to do time lapse is to use your basic video camera. You'll have to change your tapes often if you're going for a longer time period. It's a bit of a pain in the butt in the post process because you'll have to record the entire tape to digital and then speed it up. There are programs out there that will glean intervals out of the tape. I just remembered the program is called Scenalizer, but you'll still have to wait for the tape to literally go through the time period that you're recording. Three tapes at 120 minutes, you'll have to wait six hours getting them off. There's another disadvantage. You have to have a lot of storage to pull all the data off of a videotape and then compress it down in time. You can find a mini DV recorder, camera, camcorder, or a high def camera for relatively low cost nowadays. To me, personally, it seems like a bit of a pain in the butt for not the greatest quality. It's best used in compressing five to say 20 minute durations. You see it a lot in reality TV shows and whatnot. Now I won't totally poo poo using video cameras. For example, the Panasonic HVX series, HVX 200 I believe, has a very interesting hack that you can get it to do lower frame rates and I believe it goes down to two frames per second and any increment between two frames per second and 30 frames per second and at high def that's a very nice camera and it produces beautiful work. So let's talk about digital cameras. 
It's my favorite favorite solution. I think it's the best way to produce high quality time lapse. You get the resolution, you get the long time periods, you get not a lot of power usage, you get frames that are ready to be loaded post process and not a lot of time. You get high quality, wonderful glass is out there. You get a lot of creative opportunities in terms of exposure time. And it can be done relatively inexpensively as well. I'm going to approach um, this based on budget. We'll start with some cheaper cameras that I've found and then we'll move up to the more expensive and, well, better quality cameras.